differently. Let's go yep. ahead and take a look at the series. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to College Cod. Did a little bit of musical chairs with some Canadians on the caster booth. My name is Proffer. Now I am joining Katie on the desk. Katie, you just got done with a pretty mm -hmm. fun series, I would say the least. FGC could not get it done versus Shenandoah in four. But our matchup, you see right above our lovely faces, we'll be looking at FGC, but they are going up against the number 22 ranked team of High Point. So my big question, we just watched Florida Gulf Coast have a pretty heartbreaking loss. I mean, they were down 4-1 in map number two after a decisive map one victory. They bring it all the way back to around 11 get the first blood, then get two-piece, collapse, lose the map. They bring it back from being down about 70 points in the hard point. They have the hill. They have the rotation. They lose 250 to 240 in that map four. So we're going to have to see, can they hit the regain? Can they put that behind them and come into this with eyes wide open? If they can, I think they're going to look great. But I, we've seen it. They've, they've got the ice, but not, not quite enough. Yeah, you saw the maps kind of scrolling through ever so slightly down low. That map number four is actually going to be map number one uh, here on Tuscan Harpoint to kick things off. But uh, I'm not too sure, Sport. We got enough time to even take a look at our heart, at our teams. We'll go ahead and take a look at the matchup here. My point has been a roster that has been tweeting at everybody relentlessly. Who are they, a little sassy? The beginning of the season. Yeah, they're getting sassy, Katie, because they wanted to be a top 25 ranked team. They finally came through in their Southeast Division. And they finally made a name for themselves to be able to beckon to be that squad to be in the top 25 rankings. Only with that one seasonal loss, you can see how it currently stands with a little bit of falters here and there across the other game modes. I think this is going to be a good test continuously. And I say this every single time that I get the, uh, the High Point University roster on my screen versus another ranked team about where they truly stand in the top 25 rankings. And I mean, my concern here, you look at this head to head, right? I, I mean, and these are some of the maps that we saw Florida Gulf Coast. They were missing two series matchups going into their prior game. So they're trying to make up some of that ground now. But you look at this hard point, search and destroy, pretty much dead even. The control, though, I just, based on what I saw in the prior matchup, that seven and three from Florida feels very deceiving because the three and zero that happened to Tuscan against them, they didn't even feel like they existed on the map, to be frank. So I'm going to want to see more decisive, better control gameplay out of them. And hey, maybe it was just the map mode combination. And speaking of, let's take a look at where we we're heading. I think you said initially, are we starting out into a Tuscan hardpoint? Yeah, Tuscan Hardpoint is going to be map number one. We actually won't see the Tuscan control. It'll actually be a Kavutu control, but we'll talk about the rosters first and foremost. Sexton, Devilish, Freedom, and Brewing. I've been quite hot on these guys uh, coming out of the High Point University Esports Club. It's one of those things that, you know, when we talk about High Point, even from Cold War coming into the Vanguard season, some names uh, come, and, come and go, especially as it may end up being uh, returning rosters. And what we did see at the beginning of the season through a multitude of different tournament organizers collegiately, this roster kind of went underneath the radar. But as the regular season has been progressing, they've been doing quite well for themselves. And I mean, the, sometimes you can use that to your advantage, right? If people aren't paying attention to you and maybe they are not valuing you as the threat that you actually are, you can take maps off people, surprise them with comebacks when they're not treating you with the respect they should. And well, High Point, you said it, they're tweeting at everyone. They wanted to get into that top 25. They did just that. Now they're going to see if they can browbeat Florida a little bit more, give them two series losses in a row. And I feel like that's got to give them a little bit of momentum anyway, right? You would certainly hope so, right? Let's go ahead and take a look at the away roster. You saw them earlier in that 3-1 loss versus Shenandoah. Perchy, Beeser, Pippen, and Justin. And the, th the thing about this, this entire roster for me, Katie, is that we got to see them compete essentially on land when they were going up against the uh, the Barry Bucks. Uh, and it was uh, a lackluster, to say the least. A lot of the things that you, me, and, uh, and Jesse Cruzen were talking about... Uh, in the digital green room, if you will, before I actually hopped into the booth with you, it actually goes one-to-one -one with what I've been seeing from FGC as a whole. I definitely want to be able to see this team come into their own. I want to be able to see what this roster has to offer because I've gotten to know Kirchie a little bit over the past year, and he is diligent. He is understanding about what it means to be able to be good and to be decisive across respawn game modes. It just needs to all click between these four players. Well, and I think as well, they do have that coaching, maybe that person, that support element right here that can help their just heads get back onto where they need them to be going into a fresh series. And as you said, we started out with a Tuscan hard point.
followed up by some Bokash search and destroy, which could get a little interesting. Gavutu control, and well, if we can get to maps four and five, it rounds out how it began a Bokash hardpoint, and then ending on Telskin search and destroy. And really, that Bokash, I'm quite excited to see that search. I think that should be a good time. But what well, we gotta get through this hard point first, Andy, and we'll see. This is uh, this is a map where they fell just shy florida in the prior series this is where they lost that series do you think they can get a regain well i mean what they had all of uh i'm looking at my my wrist I'm, I'm basically making fun of it's maybe there's a watch there uh all of maybe like 10 15 minutes to be able to go in between map four versus shenandoah and now where they lost a whole 10 points but that's more than enough time if you ask me to be able to rectify the smaller bits of issues that fgc were facing they are starting off on the favorite side of the map though and kirchie just hits a route through the middle of the map they will find a return to fire sender they're on a devilish gets information coming out of you there's big trust that justin's going to be able to stay alive and juice up more time for the bank of fgc and Sexton able to strike first with that first blood does get traded, as you said, immediately by Kershey, but they're able to actually slip by him mid-map before Kershey ends up getting killed. So high point, just like that, they are now on the hill, only allowing Florida Gulf Coast 10 points of time. And now with that scrap time kicked in, you go down to Brewing, who's already at the bottom of the map, prepared for the push coming out of Gulf Coast. He's not able to win it, though. Unfortunately, even if you get one, anything can help. And now you're going to have Devilish pushing around toward those spawns seeing what he can do, but he is behind the enemy lines. Everyone is in front of him. Devilish has a chance to be able to make this play happen from the back. Still trying to at least guard away these spawns, but this, is, this almost feels like I'm hitting B zone, uh, going on Tuscan control, and that first kill will come through in the back. Now the hit has to come and be successful through the patio. Big three for one within the kill feed. Spawns are still intact, though. If you look down on the east side of the minimap, FGC are essentially still spawning in for two. The biggest issue is that high point should be more than aware about where these players are going to be coming from. They have the understanding, but they cannot win the gunfights. Still scrapping it out. 30 seconds left to play for here on two. Florida, they finally get some headway, get onto the point for all of two seconds before they get pushed off. Sexton and Freedom able to get it done. A two-piece make it three, and just like that, 20 seconds remaining, and it is continuing to go the way of High Point Esports. And, well, you're going to want to sit on that time because Florida, they're giving up the rest of it, trying to get some control on the left side of this map for that new hill. And honestly, this could get out of control very quickly if they cannot get a solid hold here on P3. They're holding on to the close response. This is probably one of the more tedious hills to try to break. Tiffin has to deal with this push that's coming through from the rooftops. Would it be a big kill? But Sexton gives him the business with the rap pistol. Now you got a little bit of an opportunity. Where do you spawn if you're FGC? All the way over on grass. So an opportunity to flood in towards wine. Sexton in a 1v1 will lose it to a nade via Tiffin. The reinforcements are not too far away. And they're actually giving a lot of good cover fire for the rest of FGC to be able to work their way back inside the hill. Biggest issue is at high point, do have those closer rooftop spawns. So they'll be in for this 30 seconds and will enforce this hill to potentially threaten that 100 point margin. I actually love that play out of Freedom and Devilish and just leading the player away, getting him shot in the back. And well, you also love to see it from Sexton. That's going to be three for him. And well, the break comes in about as easy as you could ask for for high point. And Sexton now on a five spree, trying to get the remainder of that scrap time. We'll have to deal with at least two members. Gets one. Can he snap to the second? No. Falls just short. But the damage is done. Florida Gulf Coast, they had the opportunity, they had the setup, and it all collapsed. It did, in fact, all collapse. And well, what's even collapsing is the hopes and dreams that FGC are going to be able to at least <laughs> work their way back inside of this first set of hard points. Katie, it is a 70 point lead, and it's about to be even more so. High point are just flourishing in all of the gunfights. Sexton is 14 and 5 for crying out loud. Finds himself on another three spree, is just existing top church. Pippin has to deal with it. Sexton will see it, but will give up the angle for now. They're going to try to work a coordinated pinch, but all this moment of hesitation is just information that High Point know exactly where FGC are coming back into. A team kill is not going to help, but that clean kill fee with Tippin taking down Brewing in the back will at least get you in for the scrap time. Uh, I mean, the scrap time is nice, but you're going to need more than that if you want to start mounting a comeback. Case in point, Sexton, right before those deaths, was triple positive at 15 and 5. You're going to have to try and slow him down. And, well, they're actually doing a great job of it. Again, that kill feed, it's all Florida as they take this scrap time and they fight over this next hill. You're going to have another push coming in here from Devilish. We'll see if he can get any damage. But Tivin has his number, knows where to expect him on the first floor of the building. And now a bit of a stalemate as Florida still 
Ill coming out on top in these kills outside the zone. And well, they have the setup. They stopped the opening push from high point. And now this is where they can really start to make that comeback. P5 and a P1. It, rotation from two different sets of hard points is where dreams are made for teams to be able to come back inside of a Tuscan hard point. You got to be able to deal with the hit. It's a coordinated pinch at that. Perchy needs to go big. Does find two. Has three within the doorway. Be able to lock down Devilish. A trade will ensue. And Brewing is locking things down over top of this table. So now you're basically forced to almost hit for the scrap time. You don't want this back 20 seconds to go up for free if you are FGC. But no one was clearing away the fire alley. Sexton unfortunately did throw a couple bullets. Maybe feeling themselves a little bit too much. But the re-enter themselves in the bottom side of P5 will at least consume the back end of this five seconds as FGC are trying to get on the north side of the map. And they will be successful so far out of the second set. Oh, and Brewing, a nice kill there on Abyssir. Doesn't get the first bullets, but he gets the last one. Tipping, though, there with at least a trade to delay Sexton, causing any havoc here as we get into this second rotation. But Brewing, what can you do? You have freedom on your side to try and push with you into the hill. Get the contest. Force these players to look around. And, well, you got to hit your shots, though. Kirsch gets the win. Brewing there for the trade. But can you take down the point? No. Still in Florida Gulf's hands for the time being as they fight it out with Devilish. But now the reinforcements from High point are going to be able to get there first and get the flip onto this point. All these one dimensional hits are just going to continue to batter and bruise FEC. I mean, you go back through that first set of hard points, it was literally that and more. Streaks are actually going to be invested here for Kirch, and I don't really like that personally. You're trying to break into one, but it's actually being used as a distraction to try to work your way across P2. The biggest issue is, is that you're going to be able to at least get what? Seven seconds off of P1? This is a lot of hope that you're able to rotate. Quite frankly, across the entirety of the map of Tuscan, you were able to get close respawns over by the rooftop, but still, my point are intact for these close spawns in the back. You still have Tibbin up top third. 8 and 11, not the sexiest KD ratio to speak of, but you have a lot of high point members you have to cut through before you get inside it too. What I've loved out of watching Sexton's gameplay, actually, is that he seems to have a very good beat on where the pushes from Florida are going to come from, and he sets up at angles to try and cut them off at the knees before they can actually contest. And, well, Freedom and Bruin helping keep each other alive as they lock down this point. And, well... Bruin, and I think Freedom was actually on five when he got cut down, but they've just, they've done such a good job of building defense, especially on this point of breaking Florida's Hills. So when you look at this right now, as Bruin, he's not missing shots. They're getting a nice hold. They're pushing ever closer to 200. What do you do if you're Florida to try and come back from this hole you've dug yourself into? I mean, you got to be able to find sufficient breaks. And once you are able to get yourself those sufficient breaks, and you have to turn into a successful hold. Look, if you're going to be that team that rotates late and you're trying to battle for the scrap time, you better be able to have a high break potential. And so far, those things have not really offered themselves for a goal. I mean, yeah, Kirk. Perch is up to 18 and 19. They were able to get at least the glide bomb. But look at the setup that High Point are working with, specifically brewing over by this rooftop. Does fine too. But now the hit is ensuing over by L. You also have the push through vines will be quite successful. While brewing is still existing back here, keep in mind you will finally be dealt with. But as soon as the hit comes through, High Point are over the 200 point threshold. 212 v 112. And you know they're going to hit it one more time. I know, they want to kind of twist that knife, right? They're so confident in their gameplay that they feel like they can waste the time here. And, well, Florida, it's your opportunity to put, punish them for it. A full team wipe sends them back to their spa, and no point in trying to contest that scrap. You have a 100-point lead on them. Just focus on the next rotation. But, Florida, there's an opportunity there for them, right? If high point is overextending in confidence from their lead, you can find ways to use that to your advantage. But you're also going to have to deal with the fact that Freedom's in the back. He's able to at least get one before he gets traded out by Justin, but that does mean high point. They will be on P2 first, try to soak up that time. They can win it here in Florida. That's got to make you nervous. The Eagles got to sprout wings. They got to fly. FGCU, they got to work their way across the map. Trades are not going to be good enough if you're looking to break inside the spawns. Kirchie, not close enough to be able to block that spawn against Freedom. And they have to wait. They have to stall out and wait for reinforcements to work their way across the map. The only issue is that reinforcements are coming a little bit too late. Justin's able to find at least two. They're being dealt with at the front door. And High Point University, they are just dealing with all the numbers in spades. Number five is in the threshold for Freedom. Can't lock it down. Devilish will just spam a few more shots. It's just one by one. Gals were coming through, and one by one they'll fall. A little help over top of the banister will be the last little lick of offense that FGCU will only look at. It was a much definitive, more definitive win for High Point in this hard point versus uh, FGCU than what Shenandoah looked like. High Point University, again, just relentless on finding these isolated gunfights and having their way with them. 
I mean, what we just watched, I have to point out freedom the way that he was playing. He was negative that for the most of the map, but he was getting very key kills for them. He gets four in church, allows his team to set up behind him. Brewing was fantastic. I mean, they just never gave Florida a moment to breathe the entire time, and it felt like they could not find their footing in and around that map. Like, when it comes down to it, especially in a game like Call of Duty Vanguard, we see this all the way up, whether it's Challengers or Call of Duty League, the team with the better cohesion will absolutely run circles around a team that is kind of fumbling and trying to find these uh, almost adjacent pinches that we saw FG FGC trying to at least force for themselves, especially when we're talking about breaks inside of two or inside of three. We'll take a look at some of these stats, and I'll continue on with this point here, Katie, is that a high point every single time that they were going for a break their pinches were like a like a symphony they they were always coordinating on two different sides and being successful in them too obviously when your gunfights it is the forehead statement of this entire argument but more so than that when fgc were trying to at least work for these breaks and trying to pinch say inside of four you saw disjointment players trying to rush inside of the front door while the other players are still getting pushed back over by grass you have to be discipline in that manner and fgc didn't necessarily showcase that yet yeah, kirch and justin still went positive 24 21 21 22 positive in my book with 2400 damage for justin but when you're looking at from top to bottom on the other side for high point you're right to call out freedom they had a minute and five of hard point time 20 and 21 in total 16 18 for brewing 16 17 for devilish were almost a non-benefactor they just had to soak up hard point time and just play these head glitches that we know and love uh, when it comes down to Tuscan Hardpoint and, and the win just came to them. All the gunfights were just coming lickety split. And Devilish, two and a half minutes of hill time for him. It doesn't it matter fine. at that point. If you're 16 and 17, you're getting an average of 15 seconds of hill time on every hill. That racks up very quickly. Only one you kill are... was traded, by the way, for Devilish. And you are you look at this, right, though? You are enabling your team to do everything they need around you and they at the same time are putting up such a good line of defense that no one could even get near devilish to try and take him off the point and well you won't have to maybe worry about points rotating this time around but you will have to worry about bokosh search and destroy if you're florida so uh i think we're gonna jump right into it because for once the player's not making us wait so we're gonna jump right into the bokosh snd it's going to be a scary one for FGC. I mean, the beginning where we were tough, kind of firming up these two teams. It's at 13-3. They are technically 13-4 and four with uh, losing that round 11 to Shenandoah Esports on a Berlin search and destroy. The, the biggest benefactor coming into a Bokosh now is that like, you can try to dictate the pace and try to uh, find these engagements against high point, but they're so disciplined. Look at the defensive setup off the rip. Nobody's getting too wily. FGC trying to find some information, but the Eagles are coming up with absolutely nothing. They're throwing out those nades, trying to get some information on where exactly these players are. And we saw Florida was excellent on this map in the hard point in their prior series. So we'll see if they can translate that. And well, Beaster does a great job of it, taking out Freedom in the first blood. Brewing answers back with a kill of his own. Now 3-3. Three, three, and if you're not careful, Sexton, well, he's going to run up behind you and shoot you in the back. Now, man advantage to high point as they look to take this map and brewing well you gotta make sure to check your back so you don't get flanked and now unfortunately for justin he's all on his own but should be able to get at least one now in a 1v2 exactly where he's at but at 35 seconds it, it's a very likely possibility that justin could have actually moved their way back to the middle of the map has to recover the bomb just outside of the shed gotta move back to the devil see it on the mini map they're just doubled up together they played for the trade game they should be able to fish out this kill they could have also just i mean sat and watched the bomb but oh, i, I mean i like it you can run around hold hands it's a very bo4 play style just be able to watch over each other's backs and you know that he has to get a plant at some point and well we'll see if the check comes in and it does sext in there just waiting the plant goes down flies in and yeah i mean i agree you can watch the bomb you can hold hands and rotate together there what i liked from that was that it was safe they played it very smart even right to the very end right i mean they got the information that justin was top barn and from that little bit of information they split between the two bomb sites because they knew with about 15 seconds on the clock the only play that justin really had was to extend the clock to 45 seconds by planting the bomb and because of that they were be able to uh, isolate the play on two different fronts it was sexton that was able to find it into the back over by top flat it's gonna be a very surgical defensive round coming out from high point just punishing the eagles when they were trying to work their way through the middle of the map we'll have to see what their defense looks like but for high point 
from the Panthers on the prowl to the middle of the map. Three players stacking it. They're trying to take some of that mid-map control far more aggressive in their offense than what we saw out of Florida. And Wilt pays off Sexton with that first blood. Took out Beezer last round. We'll do it again here and tries to snap on to Justin, get some shots in, but it's Justin on this side. Florida with the double brewing. Answers back. Cursed with another trade. And just like that, brewing in a 1v2. Situations reversed as he tries to salvage this offensive round for high point. The bomb is stranded by A. So how do you play this with 50 seconds left? Got to almost try to work a pick. You can see what Kirchie and Kippen are doing. They're not giving up the ground. Ring's going to at least check to the back. We'll see Kirchie up top, and that's the immediate information that you need. 35 seconds left to play. Ring has to go for reposition. Kirchie, what the heck were you trying to do there, brother? You had the positional advantage. Drops down. Now forces out a 1v1. Don't go anywhere without the buddy system. Strangers can be very scary. And in Brewing's case, you died nice. for it. Now, Tippin on his own. But you still got to get the bomb if you're Brewing. You still have to get that plant or at least try to get the pick. But it's going to be the plant he goes for that safe route and should be able to get it done now. Tippin working his way around the outside. But the push is going to come in fast. And Brewing's not expecting it on his right. And the push comes in. He gets the shots out. And can he connect? Whoa. They stay alive. And he gets it done. Brewing through the door around the corner. A loop de -loop loop and high point somehow they pull that offense out shoes are definitely looking cool after that little loopy loop i mean brewing goes for the slide nine hp tippin definitely had the advantage but you saw a little bit of hesitation burst through the door and it wasn't even being an angle that was that was being hard held by brewing just got a little bit of a snapper for some damage and tippin just gave up the space rather than just trying to brute force their way into the engagement which they probably would have had the advantage in uh Again, because Brewing it did end up missing at least that first bullet, but it allowed Brewing to at least break the camera through a slide, through the door. Got two rounds of the favor for high point. Aggressive push coming through from the Eagles, and Kirch is going to get cut down in the middle of the map. The bomb is dropped in a precarious spot. Bomb is dropped. It's a 4v3. High point just had a huge clutch, and, well, Brewing's already 5-1. and one. Momentum purely in high point esports favor. Brewing twisting it, making it ever more painful now at 4 as Florida has Justin and Breeser trying to get something done. And, well, now it's just Beeser all on his own and able to take down Devilish. Good kill, something to start with. But, well, that's all you're going to get is high point in your face. No time to even make some sort of a sneaky play. Beeser, a good attempt. But high point, that's three in a row for them. And they are looking just as good as they did in the hard point. Yeah, they really did. I mean, just decisive. They know exactly what they're looking to do. And... It's not like they're going and doing anything too crazy. They're just playing really good fundamental Bokash search and destroy, you know, making sure there's always a player top grandma's window, watching a player uh, all the way over by top plat, island player over by B, watch the mid street, and can watch that river push as well. They're just catching FGC with their pants down, trying to trying to make these very cutesy plays with some timing and not giving up any information to boot. Three player stack this time over by the P2 side. They're actually going to try to push this from the bottom side of the water wheel. Brewing had no idea where they were being shot from there for a hot second. They were top gate. Numbers advantages in favor of the defense. I mean, Shenandoah pulled Florida's pants down. I think High Point's just trying to keep them on the ground, not really giving them much time here. But hey, this is a big swing background. Beasts are able to capitalize on the kill from previous and make it a 4v2, the best round they've had so far, and makes it two. Can't get the third as Devilish cuts him short, tries to get another, but will fall in that gunfight. Florida finally a round on the board, and honestly, a must-win round for Florida. You can't go down 4-0 against a team that's playing this well. Yeah, going down 4-0 in a search and destroy, never a good spot to be in. Going down 4-0 in a search and destroy versus a team that is absolutely running and gunning you, that is uh, just damning to say the least. Uh, I think what you're mostly going to be recognizing is that the way that FGC played that was very conditional, you know, very controlled. You know, they, they went for that same setup that, that we've been seeing continuously out from high point, just making sure that every single avenue was crossed. It was high point. Try to get a little bit too cute with their push, but here come the Eagles. Four players, more or less stacked over towards that tank formation. Justin's going to need a couple shots. That was over by the gate. They're going to have to concede the space. For now, the second they pop through the door, Brewing had a well-cooked nade to meet him right as soon as he exited. Now Bruin answering back. Not happy that they gave up a round, trying to get a nice little 6-0 cut short by Florida. Now high point, they want to just punish as much as they can, and well, you gotta win that fight, and Devilish comes out on top. Beaser again, doing what he can to be able to try and even these numbers, but a 3-2 advantage here for a high point as Devilish 
Pre aims right into one, has an idea where Beaser is behind that tank. Spots him full out, but doesn't win the gunfight. Beaser with two again. Two on the last round, two on this round, and now it's all tied up at 2 2 man count. And what look at that bomb, though. That bomb is uh, in the middle of nowhere. So if you're tipping, you're going to need to grab that and go because you only got about 25 seconds. Let's scoop it. 20 seconds to try to make this play happen. Again, you go back to any sort of knowledge of search and destroy, you know that they're going to try to put a commit towards one of these pushes. Ring is cutting things down in the middle of the map. In high point esports, in these 2v2s, these 2v odd situations, when they know that the clock is on their side, Katie, it is fundamental search and destroy all the way through the defense. The trades were great, but when you're in a 2-2 like that, the setup was Brewing Watch the middle of the map for the rotation. They can get some timing to overwatch the, the B site. They look down the top of the staircase, and, and then you just end up leaving freedom inside the A site. It, you, you have everything covered at that point, knowing that FGC, again, had to make the play. Three rounds in the lead for high point. Now they're looking to get a little silly with it. They're going to commit towards this B push, but going for the old lead, the bomb in spawn tra uh, trap. I do love to see it, Katie. And you love to see Bruin with that scoreline quadruple positive on search and destroy. Just two kills away from double digits. That's how you know someone is having their way with the lobby. If they're sitting at this point in the sixth round at eight and two. But Kirsch able to get one as Sexton gets one on to B, sir. So now a 3v1 again. A man advantage here for high point and bomb down at B. I like this positioning from Bruin. Just waiting for the push from Florida. A misstep from them to get a little too aggressive. And I love this. Freedom just pre-aimed ready to go prone on the ground makes justin punish pay for it and now kirsch well you're left alive and sexton takes you out I, this has just felt so methodical again disciplined is the way that i would talk about high point when it comes down to all three game modes really you know it's, it's just that one loss that they ended up having that against a team that was able to dial it up just a little bit further if high point are playing out of 10 the enemy team at that time was playing at 11 now they're the team that's able to play at an 11 i mean you can even look from top to bottom i mean sexton off a 37 bomb in map number one is seven and three eight and two for brewing casual stuff coming out of the panthers they are just having their way with the eagles they are just understanding on what needs to happen there just running at them defensively one for one trade through the middle of the map devilish to the pistol finds the next 2v3 to stay alive in the search. This is just respectful out of Devilish. I want to say that right now. Him just flying at people, trading, pulling out the pistol. Complete disregard for where Florida is or what they may be doing. Brewing now at 9-2, and two, trying to get to triple digit or double digits, rather. And, well, Tippin just trying to find a kill at all. And, well... Unfortunately, he's going to end 0-6. Not quite a full-fledged member of the agency, but he got to the final round of interviews. High point team is just on a different level right now, I'm telling you. I mean, it, it, it could be a multitude of factors. You know, when it comes down to this uh, this FGCU roster, the Eagles might be a little bit boomed uh, when it comes down to losing a lot of those closer maps uh, versus Shenandoah. But, I mean, the way that the Panthers are just playing Call of Duty right now is, is just so so reserved especially through the early goings of those maps or of those rounds excuse me is that they were essentially giving fgc nothing they were kind of feeling the waters which is kind of the definition of a championship caliber team a top 25 ranking team might i add for hpu when they are sitting there feeling out how fgcu want to be playing throughout the entirety of that bocot search and destruct the moment that they knew that they weren't giving any information over to fgcu they counted stuns, nades, whether it's sound cues, whether it's physically seeing them be tossed over grandmas. They knew that they had no tacticals, no ordinances left in their back pocket, Katie. And then they knew exactly what had to happen. It was down to 30 seconds continuously, and they just completely collapsed, not losing a single number, not losing a single step along the way. Brewing, only one traded, by the way. Nine and two overall through the search. Sexton, seven and four, will continue on with their dominance. That 1100 damage that Brewing was finding with the Automaton in those early stages going on a five straight through the multitude of rounds that we saw. It's definitely going to give me nightmares later tonight. Look, I think my favorite stat line here is that Freedom was three and four and had 163 damage in the lobby. <laughs> 
I like that. That's my favorite little nugget to take away from any of these stats. I mean, you can tell he's just securing those kills, right? Low damage amount, but he's securing the kills from the work that the rest of the team is putting in. And I mean, you have to feel for Tippin, right? Like he just couldn't get anything going on the map. Neither could Florida as a whole. And as, as we prepare for break, the question I have for you uh, proper is that that is now three maps in a row that Florida has lost, starting with that map loss to lose this series against Shenandoah and then getting smoked in maps one and two here. So what do they do to try and regain in the control? I mean, you just got to be able to find yourself because you know you're going to a Gavutu control. And this is actually a very good map. I have seen Tiffin go absolutely AWOL on this map and find a lot of value because it, it kind of panders to the style that we know that the, the rest of the Eagles roster out of FGCU love to play. Very slow, try to punish these aggressive notions coming out from high point. Don't try to meet the pace of the Panthers. It will not work for the Eagles. We saw that happen even against the Bucks when they were playing on the opposite side of tables of one another. And it's sure as hell not going to happen versus the Panthers out of high point. You have to be able to play reserve control, play off the picks, the information, and all the different angles that are more than open on a Gavutu control to be able to find yourself those numbers advantage even in the kill feed before taking ground away uh, from the Panthers. All right, well, it's time to go to a break. And I mean, hey, maybe they're going to need that break. Stretch your legs if you're Florida. Get some water because it's not just three in a row. It's actually five maps in a row that they've lost. So we'll see. They're overdue for a win. When we come back for the break, can Florida get it done on the control? Bye bye. We don't need to lose any maps. Well, the Eagles' wings are currently being clipped as they are five maps in a row. All L's. My name is Proper. Yeah. Joined with me is Katie Bedford. And we are in the thick of it of FGC's doubleheader here on the Alpha Stream for the College Cod League in stage number two. And Katie. My point are looking disciplined, but it's FGC that really need to turn things around in the upcoming map. Yeah, they're down horrendous right now. Florida. I... You won one map six maps ago. You looked great in an opening hard point against Shenandoah. You have proceeded to lose every single map after that. And I'm not, I would be more surprised if they looked solid in this control than I would be if they kind of look like the wind's been taken out of their sails, if you will, because five in a row, that is so brutal proper but who knows i mean that might be what the coach is there for right the coach is there to just try and keep you looking at the prize extend it one more map just focus on the control forget what's happened before how win this map win the next map keep moving forward let's see if things get a little bit more upwind for fgc as we're heading towards gavutu and you can talk about a, a map that can be a little bit more forgiving for a team you're looking at it Again, we are not playing tick progression to decide round five. It is still overall eliminations, and that could be good when you are a fan of FGC, but that opening gunfight did not look good at all. As high point immediately <laughs> get top LST. Nobody in the middle of the map for either of these two teams, but it's early A zone presence coming out from the Panthers. Well, Kershey's able to get two, stays alive, just trying to be a nuisance in around the point. Makes it three, denies him that quick first ticket A, which they undeniably would get if Kirsch falls. And, well, trying to make it Thor and does just that. And, hey, I said, are they going to look lackluster? Are they going to look defeated? If you're Kirsch, the answer is no. You are doing a great job of stalling out high point right now. Will finally fall. Just like that, Florida in and around this point once again, just trying to stall out high point and doing such a good job of it. This is a great start for them. Yeah, no, it's a fantastic start. I mean, the return coming through from Kirchi in the middle of the map. Yeah, it will finally be put to rest, but that pro start, you're definitely going to be feeling it if you're talking, if you're thinking about it. And yeah, this is the guy that I was talking about, eh? going away from map number two into map number three. This map mode, 
will actually favor Tippin, who is 3 and 0. Say what you will, not the most engagements, but it's conveying the information for a 2 SMG setup defensively that is working so well out for the Eagles. Justin getting a little bit too close towards that arch rock will be cut down, but. 28 seconds remaining, a four-life lead in favor of the defense. All they have to do is find kills and dwindle down the clock. That's exactly what they're doing. 16 to 21 lives in favor of Florida. And, well, a contest happening here. Justin and Kirsch just continuing to be nuisances in and around this point. And what looked like an amazing start for a high point has really been the only amazing part of this round so far. Florida has stopped them dead in their tracks. Now Justin feeling the confidence to be able to push toward this high point spawn and stop pushes from them getting anywhere through even the middle of this map. And as time dwindles down, Oh, they're not going to be able to get out of their spawn. That is where they will stay. Florida that was a great defense. Yeah, it really was. And the reason why I'm sure a lot of people will probably uh, note, why are they not pushing out of their spawn in 28 seconds? It, it's, it, people will say that it's never chalked, but in that specific moment for a first-round offense, it's absolutely chalked. And you have to respect the life deficit, which was plus seven for Florida Gulf Coast. Uh, going in towards the second round, and, and it needs to be mitigated uh, almost immediately. That high point need to almost have Jesse Stellar as a defensive round, it, just not only winning it, but having a fantastic life lead at the end of it as well. Sexton, nice little nerdy angle. We'll take down Beaster the moment that they even thought about getting up top LST. But numbers are still around the corner for the Eagles, and we'll be on the A zone to stop that clock. We'll see, Florida, can you get some better luck here on the offense than you denied to high point? And Justin seeming to be so comfortable in and around this A point, finessing through the ship on the top, bottom, just keeping alive and picking up the kills in the process. And, well, it's rendered you a nice first tick, working on that second tip in the only one of the point. But Justin on a five spree as he makes it into six, takes down Freedom, and now trying to get some potential full streak usage later on. But Florida now with a two stack on. It's going to start going really quick unless Devilish can make something happen. And, well, Bruin's too busy killing himself to do much of anything. At A, Justin's now on seven, and that cat very well could come through here any second now. That just sucks for Bruin, right? I mean, you're already trying to deal with the four players of FGC. Did not know that the Eagles sent a rogue player to end up paying off that barrel to take down Bruin as well. The A zone will be secured. 23v19, FGC got a minute 54 to be able to work their way across over by the B zone. Now, here's the biggest issue going forward, is you're going to have to expend a lot of time to make this play happen for yourself. And High Point are actually dealing with it quite wonderfully before even any gunfights do start to follow. Brewing is over by top ring. Tiffin understands that. Will immediately convey that information over towards Kurt, who does end up having that bulk. Tries to go one for one in the back over by the antenna. Will be cut down while they're doing so, but the play is still alive for FGC to try to find some ground on the backside of green to make sure that the reinforcements get back through the middle of the map. And Justin just doing what he can in that forward position to stay alive, wait for his team to get there to try and assist him. Knows that there's multiple members of High Point around him, but actually might be able to slip out undetected as he's going to see Freedom run in, run in front of him, get that kill, and now suddenly he will get traded out by Brewing, but able to cause some chaos and give Florida the time they need to get as close to the point as they have been thus far with 55 seconds left. And about... An 18 to 13 lead. Florida, they're in a good position. If they can get at least one pick here and get the man advantage to push onto the hill, then they're in a good spot to take this offense. 18 v 13. Got to get on that zone, stop that clock, 42 seconds, and they're in a great spot to try to take this offense, KD. They have a lot of presence over by ring, and you would almost assume that high point, they need to send one of these players to actually go over towards top ring and try to contest some of these god spots, but the kills start going in the favor. Kirchy does find two, will find three with the Volk, and that's going to be immediately focused over towards the stack of the B zone. First take has already gone through. And sometimes all you need is that first pick. Gives your team the confidence to make that push, and, well... Fortunately, you were able to get a tick. Unfortunately, uh, you weren't able to get much more than that. High point able to stabilize now, and it's 9 to 14, so trying to lower those odds about 8 to 13 now and doing what they can to just not make this a TDM situation for them with four respawns remaining and 18 seconds. If you can get just a couple more kills here and push Gulf Coast back, they won't even have a chance to get on the point, but you also got to be careful for the fact that two of them are in your spawn and trying to chase down Bruin. 
That seven life lead now make it eight. FGC can do no wrong. No respawns remaining. Sexton is keeping their head on a swivel up top ring. Would have been a big one if they found number seven for a glide bomb going into the next round. But now it's 2v10. This is actually still doable for high point. They're actually in a position. Brewing just has to deal with some more players coming back over towards the zone. He knows that FGC has to contest and Kirchi will take him down. Wow, that got really closer at the end, but it will be FGCU that take back-to-back -back rounds and put themselves one step closer to at least putting themselves on the board. One round away from snapping the losing streak, and that's got to give you so much confidence. You win the defense. You win the offense. You're able to clutch up and get it done. Now you just have to do it one more time on a defense and give yourself a nice 3-0 control. Give yourself that bounce-back momentum and confidence, that team synergy to make something happen. And, well, it starts. Beaser, a nice opening blood traded by Sexton. As they look to get on the board, high point looking so amazing in the first hard point and just not really able to find their footing here on Gavutu against Florida. So I asked the question, are they going to be able to punish Florida for their mental? And so far in this control, a resounding no. FGC took your response to a break in kind. They got up stretched, I'm sure of it, got some water, and they are refreshed. But the return to fire is starting to come through. A zone will be starting to be tacked over, but... Pippin contested through the middle of the map. They'll immediately put that push to rest, and the clock will continue to tick down. 26 v 23. The initial few pushes for high point won't be good for them. But again, Sexton is doing everything they possibly can to put themselves in power positions to allow the rest of the Panthers to prowl their way forward to finally get onto the zone. And a big one is going to be dealing with Justin. He's been lurking. That's what he does so effectively. He's just lurking in and around this A point, just waiting for the moment that he can strike and be a nuisance and then scramble away and try and play his life. Brewing finally flushes him out, but the play allows Kirsch to get the double, gives Florida the time to push back onto the point and to deny any more time to high point. Well, just like that, high point is at the exact same spot they were in round number one proper. You only have one tick. You have no time left. You do not have a lot. Lead, and you cannot seem to stabilize. They haven't even attempted to make a play potentially toward B, but now maybe with some of those kills finally Whoa. going their way, devilish with a two-piece, they should be able to lock Whoa. down time here on this A point. Sexton with the help, and devilish now at two, Sexton at three, and they'll finally lock down A at a much-needed minute onto the timer. Saxon putting on his best Icarus impression was trying to flirt with the idea, maybe trying to get back green, then wanted to recontest with the dock side, did not fully clear out over by P5. Yeah, 60 seconds got out into the board, but you essentially going to have to give up about 30 seconds to battle out of your spawn because the Eagles have completely taken back through the middle of the map. The only player that's pushed up, you guessed it, is Sexton. Player number four on the mini-map is still battling over by ring, by the way, but Kirchi is flourishing on a four in a row, knows that there's one player back here on P4 itself, will deal with brewing completely mentally, breaks the ankles, but Sexton makes a heads-up play, will put them over by the B zone, try to saw off that clock. They're still down by seven lives, but this does the one thing, Katie, it just buys time for the rest of the Panthers to try to work their way through the map. Yeah, but it's like they forgot that Kershey exists. He's been allowed to kill far more people and live in their spawn than should be acceptable for high point. Although they're able to get a tick and a half into that second point, trying to work on that second tick will be so crucial for them. And now suddenly, Florida, you're pushed back away from the oh, point. No There's only one member in Sexton trying to get that time, but that might be enough unless Kirsch, well, that's why you don't let him live in your spawn. He gets a glide bomb for it, calls it in, takes you out. And what could have been the closing of that final tick gets pushed back by Florida and now with only two respawns well excuse me two players left for high point I, I mean I you have to look at that Kershey play in their spawn and just wonder how that uh, went unchecked I mean it was definitely a few heat checks going back there I mean they were trying to deal with Kirch right but I mean they just couldn't win any gunfights versus him he ends that map on a nine spree and, and as you say it, it, he was just existing for too long back there. At that point in time, you got to respect the play that came through from Sexton, right? That they were able to at least try to marginalize the, the issue that Kirchie was still existing over on the offensive spawn. But the only issue is, is that when you were existing over by the zone, yes, you bought some time. Yes, you almost got that second take of progress, probably more so than that if more players for the Eagles did not come through and contest it. But you should have turned around and at least maybe throw a couple shots in towards Kirchie because he was finessing around the same rock for what felt like about 40 seconds or something. The second that that A zone got secured, 
for high point, Kershi was just like, all right, bet, see you guys over by the B zone if I die. The only issue is, they didn't die. And because of that extra little pressure that they got, they got the glide bomb. And I was thinking to myself, the second that I saw Kirchie go on that seven spree, I was like, she's just going to call in the glide and just deal with Saxon over by the zone because the rest of their teammates weren't able to get that kill on the Saxon inside of that lander. And the moment that the glide bomb gets achieved, Kirchie, I feel like I know him so well at this point, calls in the glide bomb, deals with the play over by the zone. 100% just wins that last round just because of how AWOL Kirchie was going in the spawn continuously on defense. Yeah, a great play from Kirchie. Uh, fairly unacceptable that it went unpunished in the way it did. But hey, he made the most of the opportunity and used it to close it out. And just like that, five maps in a row, but not six. They're able to answer back after being 3-0'd in control in their prior, prior series. They 3-0 high point, and well, they do it in pretty fantastic fashion after getting 250, 146, 1'd. I didn't know if they'd be able to kind of come online for this and dig deep, but that's exactly what they did. A great control will send them now into a Bokash hard point, and well, we saw them on this map before. They looked really good, so who knows? Maybe it's Tuscan Search and Destroy in our future we'll have to see right because now we go over towards that map four and the point was talked about earlier is that in the previous seven maps that we have seen fgc play in their double header here on the alpha stream the one map that they won previously to a very typical 3-0 on the gavutu control was the bokaj hardpoint versus shenandoah 250-206 was that score line and, and it was within that map that they were able to continue to live up to the standards that we know on Bokaj, and that is continuously to keep things mixy, always try to uh, work very quick and coordinated pinches when it is offered on such money hills, like trying to break into two, trying to get P3 into their favor on the backside of the hedges. That was against Shenandoah. Now you look at the argument on the other side for this High Point University roster and just how clinical they were on every single one of their holds every single one of their breaks every single one of their isolated gunfights katie on that tuscan hardpoint was so definitive in my opinion that we're gonna have to see if the eagles can fly high with this momentum that they got off that 3-0 gavutu control and just really feel themselves in towards their barrels of their gunnies and just try to outslay their adversaries of the panthers here on this bokash hardpoint well, and I just look at it. I, I get nervous for them. We saw Sexton, his slaying power doesn't matter. The map has been really going where he wants and doing what he wants. So if he brings that kind of energy alongside what we saw out of the likes of Devilish, getting those high times on the hard points, allowing, as we said, the rest of the team to push forward and give him the freedom to just sit and hang out. I mean, who knows? Uh, we could see if High Point brings it here and closes it out 3-1. But sometimes Florida, you just just need to know that you can do it you just need to know hey guys we can win a map we're here and if you do it in 3-0 fashion maybe that's all they need to start getting that uh snowball rolling down a hill and trying to make something happen be a pretty big snowball it's been getting warm down here katie no, yeah there's no snowballs in la but i like no, to imagine no, no, no. i maybe have gotten enough snow cumulatively through the past few months to maybe make uh at least the doorway of an igloo. But enough talk about snow. I'm happy that the heat is coming back out, and you almost have to feel it if you are FGC. When down by the Gulf Coast, you got to be feeling some sort of fiery way. But the 2-2 opening start, even if you are on the favorite side for FGC, there is ample time to play with here on P1, and you can just see that all of High Point, they are flourishing in that. They find the opening gunfights. They immediately get themselves inside a barn and force a spawn foot. And it's Tippin with a double who at least stops them on a couple seconds of time, but brewing a nice snap into top barn initially, able to win that chal and continue soaking time. Sexton, we said it right. We know he goes where he wants and does what he wants, and he is on six just like that. Justin denies him the glide, cuts him short, but that's what we said. You have to be able to stop that pressure from him. And, well, in the process, you managed to get an entire team wipe, so that's a great way to start. Absolutely great way to start. I mean, able to get those back spawns in your favor back by the stalls. And on P2, we, if we have any resemblance of a bunny hill here on Bokash, it is P2. Justin needs to lock down that kill on a the devilish. They will do so. You got to get someone on the hard point here, guys. FGC finding a lot of kills, but getting a lot of pressure inside of Barnes. But they're kind of fumbling with the idea of finding these setups and trying to at least have a player exist on P2. Finally, Tiffin will be that guy with the Volk looking quite diffy, might I add. Five and three for them. Goes for the Chow. Is able to lock down Devilish as well. And this is great time coming through for the Eagles here on two. 
Yeah, I think they remembered the import of actually standing on the hill. And, well, now it's earned them a lead change for the first time. 30 to 25 as they look to lock down the remaining 20. But fights going down left and right that are going in high points favor. But I have to give it to Tippin. It really feels like he's just had the survivability factor so far on this hard point to just stagger things out and deny high point running away with any particular hard point. So Tippin doing a great job, but it's going to be high point taken some of that remaining scrap time to give themselves a one second lead as now the scramble begins for p3 who can get there first well it's going to start with those spawns and florida winning out early and again it's tipping with the two Dude, tipping with the volk looks different man give me more volk action coming through from tipping he feels some sort of way nine and six and as you called it rotational gunfights were immediately won by fgc but now you probably don't want those close spawns in the back could be a little bit of a spawn trap luckily enough for you courage finding themselves on a five spree inside of grandma's has number six in the stairwell is able to lock things down freedom is in the front bring will challenge from the side we'll get a two piece of their own so no streaks to speak of in the back pocket for the eagles but even with FGC having those close back hedge spawns, High Point still doing a depth job of breaking through the front and at least marginalize what could have been a snowball potential of FGC from two to three. And just continuously changes back and forth. Florida for but a moment, High Point grasping it back before being pushed off and now Florida 55 to 50 as another lead change likely here in just a few seconds. An unfortunate team nade on Florida's side, or I think at least a team kill, might have denied him a couple of minutes or a couple seconds of time. But in the grand scheme of things, not too pivotal just yet. But high point, they are set up and ready to go on this hill. Take the lead change, and well, you're gonna have to survive Tippin. And look at it every time we look at Tippin, he is getting at least two. He is breaking those hills as best as he can. And now we'll see if Beaster can hold on as Kurt is able to get himself a double at the same time and look at that Beaser and Tippin outside the barn doing what they can to repel high point and doing such a good job of it as Beaser just ready and waiting with his SMG for the push as the rest of his team does the job outside I mean Beaser was what one in six previously to that last death in, in gun in gun spree that they just went on six and seven now for them it, their main job is again trying to get themselves to the hard point try to lock down a lot of these different lanes but uh, because you have justin and tippin absolutely balling out across the map of bokosh it allows kirchy to play that role that we know kirch likes to play and that is a roaming and yet lurking smg presence that fgc so desperately need and they are absolutely benefiting from it. But High Point, they still hold that very close lead, 85 to 76. They still hold those close spawns on the backside of five. But the way that FGC are finding these gunfights, they're dealing with players over by the Dovecot Tower, over by the Willow Tree. Unfortunate to say for them that the gunfights, the way that they were falling for themselves, they did not have substantial numbers to be able to break into five fully. And Sexton, maybe a little bit too aggressive on his push up the staircase, pays the price for it. Now Florida collapsing to try and secure themselves the scrap time. You're going to have to deal with at least two more members of High Point. And one of those will be Sexton trying to work his way back. And as you take them down, another push from Devilish, actually able to get one, maybe at least deny them about five seconds. It won't go to either team, but at least it's not going to Florida. And if you're High Point, that's certainly going to put a smile on your face as a lead change could again be likely 93 to 99 but high point the first team to cross that 100 point mark and now we get into that next rotation but high point i mean they started out strong but florida they are right there with them every step of the way I think what's really scary is that Devilish is a non-benefactor right now. 5-17 and 17 definitely needs to step it up for their team for high point. It, it, you almost have to feel that if Devilish was uh, almost being a little bit more uh, interactive with their gunfights and, and being able to get it in their favor, then high point would probably end up uh, really swinging this in their lead because from top to bottom, they are not really too far behind as far as Slays are concerned. But, I mean, Sexton doesn't care. Does find at least kill number 20 and is oh. able to at least lock down Kurt to the backside of that half wall. So, able to find the space provided for them through the middle of the map, which should be uh, at least secured for the back 10 seconds but i like this play coming through from hpu or more or less is trying to fish out the position and get some easier gunfights in their favor to allow themselves to get inside of p2 to break the spawns sexton finesse that fight with nine hp he was able to use that wall so effectively trip up that florida player and get the kill for it but again 
No surprise, it's tipping with a double in the kill feed as they look to lock this down, make it three as Florida gets full control on the point, pushes forward into mid-map, kills each other in the process. We'll see how much that matters here in the next few seconds. But, well, if you're cursed, you're doing everything you can to make sure it doesn't matter at all. But it's brewing with a double, the nade, and the gun to try and give them some momentum forward. Allow Sexton the ability to do exactly what he is now, flying into their spawn, making Florida uncomfortable. He sets such a blistering pace on the map and high point are able to get the break and get onto the hill with about 20 seconds left that's what's going to be really scary for this H hbu team right i mean that's exactly what happened during the tuscan hardpoint sexton started finding themselves on a roll and then that's quickly spiraling out of control uh, for the eagles to ever try to bounce back from 20 point lead more or less that is a good lead when you're thinking about Bokaj. It's very difficult to be able to walk away with full 30s, 40s, and hell, if you can walk away with a 50-point uh, hill, uh, then tip, tip the hat to you. But close spawns that affect your backside of 3, 4, high point, and Devilish is coming alive. 10 and 21 now is able to find those back two piece, and that means that there's a lot of space provided for high point just to kick their feet up and just wait for FGC to try to hit for the back 30. And this is the thing, right, Devilish? I mean, you don't have to be the star on your team right now, but if you can get those crucial doubles, if you can provide the callouts and give the room to your team, that can be just as important. And Freedom with a nice triple to repel the push from Florida. Make it four as he pushes into Barn, looking to find the rest of the team and hunt them down. Beaser, though, with a double. But, well, I don't think you realize exactly where Freedom is everywhere at once. But Tippin gets the kill, takes him out. And Devilish, he doesn't have to do it all, but I think what he's doing right now definitely playing its part to allow the rest of his team to get on the point and be able to stabilize Sexton now with a double of his own as they also win the rotation over to New. And suddenly what was such a close game, what, what was such a back and forth jockeying for who was going to take the lead, it's 175 to 119. And that is a massive lead now. What was a, at least a battling lead for FGC? Now find themselves at a steep deficit. Sexton, what are we? Oh my God. That right stick just got put through the blender. 32 and 19 now for Sexton. But you call it out, the, the push that ended up happening uh, just previously. So much time, which is bought in the space is being provided for more SMG presence for High Point to be able to find these kills and to have their way with this P4 Hill. Very hard to lock down time, but the way that High Point are just finding all these gunfights, finding these isolated trades. They are just constantly just berating this hard point with closer respawns in Florida Gulf Coast. They currently have no immediate answer. Really, it would feel like as they're completely getting outgunned and outmaneuvered. Now the lead stretching to about 80. And you could tell, I mean, it was such a jockey, such a back and forth. You start to feel like there's momentum for Florida, and then a high point just turns it on. And every kill in the kill feed is purple brewing, and Sexton lighting it up, getting onto the next hill first. Sexton able to get another 35 and 21, an unstoppable force on this map, pushing forward to let his team sit on the hill as he does what he can, takes the ratty angles, takes the cheeky plays, and just pushes ever closer to the these Florida spawns gives him another kill, but finally Justin takes him out. But now Freedom with the trade on to Kirsch and back and forth as Justin is there to get the support. Some desperately needed time on this hill, but you only need 23 seconds if you're high point and you need a lot more than that if you're Florida. And it starts with locking down the scrap time, but you're going to have to play perfect COD. You can't afford the contest. There's only 124 left on the overall game clock, and you have 100 points to go if you want to win and stop high point, who only need 20. Perfect hard point on Bokosh, Katie. <laughs> Those are two things that I have never seen happen. So hard to be able to play that fundamentally consistent hard point on Bokaj. It's not a Berlin, it's not a Tuscan, but you gotta somehow dig deep and make it work here if you are FGC. Trades are coming through though for high point. They know that they can just lay out and get themselves back inside a P1. 10 seconds are all they need and they have the space, they have the gunfights favorable for them. Devilish can't win the first. They're able to at least extend the clock ever so slightly, but high point set back on the hard point. Ever so threatening for Florida Gulf Coast to play uh, so, so perfect. They have the close response going into two. It's just about staying alive here on one. 
staying alive exactly that such a scrappy hill and well if you're able to soak up this much time you're certainly not going to complain about it but well every second you give them on the hill is one you can't afford to lose and well you certainly couldn't afford to lose those five high point finally gets it done the last few kills pushes florida off of p1 closes it down 250 to 169 which that score line doesn't it does not really relay how close this map was early on but High point, they get it done after an 0 and 3 for them in the control. We'll close out the series 3 1 and well, Sexton 40 and 25. Really did whatever he wanted there on Bokash. I mean, look, when it comes down to it, you're right to bring up the one specific point is that what well, we were looking at, like maybe a 5 10 second deficit between what felt like maybe five lead swaps in the first and second sets of horror points. And then you start to see Sexton heat up. They start to play that very aloof, roaming SMG role that I was highlighting Kirchie to do within that first set. When you had Tippin going absolutely AWOL with the uh, the Volk AR. And then Sexton just has their way. I mean, those kills, you're definitely going to be feeling in, in the back of your mind when it comes down to FGC losing that Bokaj hardpoint for one simple factor is that it wasn't just one player completely outpacing you. It was Sexton fighting the kills, yes. But the way that all of those kills meant something for HPU was a lot different than when Florida Gulf Coast were finding the kills themselves. To be quite frank, from top to bottom, yeah, you'll see some stark difference as far as the stats are concerned. But it really only came through the back end of the hard points, Katie. If Freedom Brewing Sexton really started to find their footing, they started getting a lot of space off of Sexton's two pieces, finessing their life for such a long time. 27 non-traded kills. 26 non-traded kills for freedom that it really just came down to be a little bit of a pace issue for florida gulf coast maybe running out a little bit of steam finding those kills getting a little bit too ahead of themselves they just didn't have an answer for the late game that the panthers brought to the table and look this is the thing right there is a very real world in which you can have your fourth player struggling in this case devilish 15 and 29 and if the rest of the team is popping off and you're happy to just take a seat on the hill the most hill time in the game at 137 just a second above freedom he's doing his job in that sense if you know that you're not slaying if you know that you're having a little bit of a struggle in your trades we'll do do what you can to help your team win. And if that's sitting on the hill and on occasion getting nice two pieces to help relieve some of the pressure, Devilish did a good job with that. But, I mean, look at it. It's, it's so even, especially in a lot of the damage distribution. It's not like Florida played that poorly, but they just couldn't keep up with the momentum of some slaying power on high point. And that's why you see it, 250, 169. It was a beautiful control, but unfortunately, that was really the only moment where Florida shined. It really was. I mean, the Gubutu control, again, it pandered to all their strengths, right? I mean, the triple AR allowed Kirsch just to go completely crazy uh, inside of the spawn uh, with with either an AR themselves or an MP40, as what we saw in that last round. But, I mean, it was just clear, concise, and fundamental hardpoint and search and destroy coming through for the Panthers. Again, just beckoning the reason why they're not only just a top 25 team, but should be highly respected as a college here in the College Cod League, the 2022 season out of High Point, North Carolina. Definitely has my vote to be able to be looked at uh, as a team that could probably cause a lot of damage. Again, make yourself the top eight team. Coming out of this tier one division, you are guaranteed to be in playoffs. High Point are looking to be in fine strides to do just that. And well, they're looking great. We see some of Shenandoah in chat as well, giving them the props that they deserve. So once again, a big congratulations to High Point coming out with a nice 3-1 to close things down. But I mean, we're not done just yet proper. We still have another match coming up, and I know it's one near and dear to your heart. Yeah, it is. Yeah, <laughs> UMD are on the docket. Look, I know Legendary's probably in chat, right? You know, we played a lot of PGA Tour in the offseason in between Cold War and Vanguard, and even in between Modern Warfare and Cold War. Didn't have a college team going back into Cold War itself. I'm just excited to get some Terp Nation coming back through. They have a very tough matchup ahead of them going up against Johnson C. Smith University. It's going to be an interesting one. I haven't seen any UMD VOD all year long as much as I would love to just keep a periscope on uh, on my team as an alumni of UMD. We're going to have to throw things to a very uh, very quick break and try to get these teams populated inside a lobby so that way we can see this big old battle happening in between UMD and JCSU. <laughs> 